Hello and welcome to Two Indoor Gaming and today is something different. I'm just going to do a review of a special builder's challenge book. Now this is called the Minecraft STEM Challenge Build a Theme Park and it doesn't have an author listed but it's from Carlton Books and it's independent, unofficial but what it is is it's setting out a theme park and giving some STEM principles along the way. If you don't know what STEM is, it stands for Science, Technology, Engineering and Maths. It doesn't say exactly what age group it's aimed at and it's an interesting mix because I think some of the building requirements of being able to handle Minecraft require an older sort of early teens group I'd say but a, a lot of the STEM principles are possibly for a little earlier than that so it's a little mixed on that I guess it covers a broad range of ages some kids will find the build difficult but the information's right at their level others might find the information a little junior for them whereas the build is definitely at their level of capabilities plus being Minecraft and being children that's quite can be quite a mix you can have quite young excellent Minecraft builders and others that are older that can't handle it so well so this theme park I put together with uh, my son, The Edger, who's done videos with me before on Creativeverse and is hoping to do some more of those again soon. But we did this because it was his sister's 11th birthday this week and so the last few weeks we've been chiming in and spending what time we can putting together this theme park as a birthday present for her and she loved it. Uh, but now I'm going to show you the thing and, and give you a little review of this book. So there's some positives and negatives, but before I get into those, let's just give you a tour uh, of the venue. So I can give you a flying tour. Uh, you come into the entrance here. This little shop here is actually an add-on that uh, the Edger created himself. It's not in the book, neither is the target range. Those are two things he just added with his other knowledge. So the official build starts here at the gates. We've got the theme park sign an entry booth with a couple of villages there uh, and uh, they just set it up with an emerald ticket and you can get some stuff out of the uh, chests and trade them with the villagers and they'll give you an emerald. It doesn't officially do anything like unlock it or anything but it was just sort of with that idea of a ticket booth set up. So you would come in and on the right you have your animal pens so sort of a little like a petting zoo with chickens and yeah yeah the usual things a lot of all the animals there we've had a few escape <laughs> uh i think they may have escaped though before we put in the walls over here is your bouncy castle and you have to go all the way see because of the lines of your for your amusement park that will be coming through i'll just fly over that so just a bouncy castle and that's with i'll show you what happens bounce it's carpet over slime box so you do actually get the bouncy uh, effect so it's somewhat functional and then you exit out the exit gate and then you come to the water slides and you there's a queue sort of stairway up the middle there and then you get to do the fast slide and the slow slide and that works like so so this is fun to put together and obviously using the water physics and it talks through in the book about water physics both in Minecraft and just in real uh, real life so you've got a bit of learning going as you construct. I think though for children they're probably just going to ignore those pages unless you actually walk them through it and um, yes it may be useful in a teacher context but it covers quite a range of factors which would hard, be hard to match to a curriculum maybe more as like a general learning okay we've got the haunted house here and it's got some limited features to it uh, it's more just playing with the builds than actual sort of the idea is you can now spawn mobs in here and it's just really like, scary because there's zombies and creepers and skeletons but yeah there's a bit of dead space going on and it's not doesn't really walk you through the areas you just sort of wander about and have a look 
creative use of redstone. Ugh, I hate these buttons. Uh, redstone for like blood splatters, <laughs> which is a nice touch. I would, definitely wouldn't have thought of that. And this is a big walk in freezer with a dungeon underneath. And so on. So, yeah. So, you've got these factors here that needs to be put up to the roof, I guess. So you've got quite a, a, a number of features of a theme park, which is good. Oh, I'm having trouble with my flying buttons here. Climb up. Yeah, that's not super functional. I uh, can get out of here eventually. Yes, yeah, so th that's probably your downside with the haunted house. Is it doesn't actually lead you. It's got features of a haunted house, but it's not really like a ride that would lead you through those features. It's just sort of walk in the front door and wander about and have a look. Over here we have the Ferris wheel, which looks great. Unfortunately, it's not mobile. That's um, definitely beyond the capabilities of Minecraft. So it is stationary, uh, but that is it looks very good. Come together quite nicely there with all of the uh, different mechanisms for getting in and out and so on and so forth. Uh, the Obviously the big feature of the theme park is the roller coaster. It takes up a lot of space uh, but it is functional. Ooh, I'm, I just sent that the wrong way. Come back, come back. So it is designed to be ridden. I'll just nudge it forward. Uh, when another cart comes around, it pushes the first cart into place, but I just haven't got that sort of set up. So we will hop in, and I'll take you for a spin. Oh, I missed the activation. This is a bit tricky. I'm getting it to go forward. There we are. So we'll go for a ride up and down. And I, I quite like the design of the park. I like that it's got uh, a lot of the key features. Ooh, corkscrew, getting dizzy, getting dizzy. Oh, uh, yeah, it's got all the features, main features of a theme park covered. You, you're working with quite a few different styles of uh, materials and design uh, you can learn a little bit about the, the rail and powers uh, with the redstone it's got the mechanisms for starting off your ride you've got a few things that you're playing with there teaching you some of the principles so for a beginning builder this would give them definitely a, a variety of new skills in a helpful way there's also a few tricks with embellishments like making their wind windows and features Ooh. yeah I'm out okay uh, I'll show you what I mean by that so like here these structures are showing you how to coordinate stairs and walls to make things a little bit different uh, it's giving you a few of those embellishments factors how to like in this structure you're using the stairs to create different contours and, and, and textures feeling to things over here a mix of colors to create patterns and stairs and fences so you, you're mixing up that you're learning a few of those things uh, there's also with the book I'll show you here you're learning like how to construct a like some people create freeform and they just have a mind that is able to construct structures and uh, without sort of plotting it out others of us mere mortals it really helps to use a grid to set the layouts and it shows you a little of how to do that with some of these graphs uh, to give you an idea of how layouts interact which is quite helpful and there's a lot of these step-by-step -step instructions walking you through the construction requirements you know first setting out the area and then building the base and then add, and, and adding things as you go so it's helping you with those step-by-step -step instructions but it's not all sweet uh, with this build and working with the edger two of us really had to apply 
to a few areas trying to work out how to make the instructions work because there's a problem with some of the builds where the instructions don't match the pictures and the plans don't match the pictures this really became obvious when we got to the water slide because these slides it's hard to picture them and, and how they come together so when you look at the plans the way they have it plotted out does not match the pictures that are provided in the book they've actually built something different and that's most noticeable up the top here where the picture had the layout of the top totally different to the way the plan has it set and we ended up sort of doing a little free forming just to make it work and that's okay and a lot of people will have no problem at all doing that free forming but you're going to find people that know some well there's a lot of children out there that want the plans to be specific they just want to follow the plans and that's what their goal is, is to make it look exactly how it's presented in the book so if your instructions are arguing with your pictures and if your instructions aren't particularly clear in areas then that's going to be very frustrating for them and we, I had some difficulty and I've got some skills and experience in this area and if I had difficulties then if you just give the book to say your average 10 11 year old uh, constructor Minecraft uh, aficionado then they're going to struggle a little to get it to translate and it's going to be a little frustrating and here's another problem you see the rain we just had rain and it turned off if I put the thing back on you'll see we've got some console commands here this is a factor with minecraft it's not the problem of the book we're working with a snapshot um i can't remember which snapshot it is off the top of my head but i'll put it up or in the description below and we found it rained like three times a day which can be just annoying except for the fact that there's lightning and uh the edge actually had to redo one of these towers because lightning struck it and burned half of it off and so that was like every time the lightning came it was like oh quick 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 because you don't want to be going back and doing some of this fiddly stuff again and if you're playing around with water if that was to get lightning struck it could be disastrous so we put in some command blocks just so that it turned off <laughs> the rain for us using a, a daylight sensor so that can get quite annoying and for some reason we have a sheep on the balcony how did that happen that sheep can jump very high okay i'm a little mystified on that one but anyway <laughs> it's in the house now maybe it got in the front door and it's climbed up okay uh, maybe it didn't jump up on the balcony anyways so that's the problem with the instructions that you do have to freeform a bit and some of them are so fiddly that you end up just freeforming anyway because it's just not worth sometimes so with some of these entryways it didn't really seem to match up very well so we just ended up put the book aside and just make them work the way you want it to work i also found it difficult in that it seemed to me a little like the instructions were backwards or, or un i think because they were trying to match the stem difficulties so that the actual information on building blocks and what it trying to make that have a logical progression and then but it was like you do the pathways and the lighting last when but that made it a little confusing because you're constantly looking at the overlay of the park and trying to work out which part was the ride and which part was the park and which part was the um queuing area and if it was if do if i was to do it again and i may do um for another video thing uh i would do the pathways first just to make it clear which parts are not right <laughs> just to make it easy to work out where you're moving to next which section you're working on next uh, because we did find that difficult now having operated around it so much it'll probably be easier if i do it again because we've spent so many hours putting it together and possibly one of the big things that I found frustrating is a couple of key areas they didn't give you instructions at all they just sort of said do this your own way and one of those was the roof of the haunted house so they've got a lot of layers here with the front and they show you where to put all the walls and stuff and they said just fill in the roof but they didn't tell you exactly how to fill in the roof and that all the photos they give you none of them show you the haunted house from the back so how do you do the back roof areas 
with all the angles and interplay and to make it all work and that was really frustrating just trying to work that out how to put it all together and in the end I was just like okay it's done that's enough moving on <laughs> because it was taking too much time and trying to play with angles and heights and trying to make it look like the photos was just too much so they left that out and the other thing is they said you know the roller coaster design your own you can make it look like ours but just do your own thing and then they just left you to it with some pictures of it at different stages but not the actual layout of it and I thought that was a real maybe they just thought it was too hard to plot it and explain it but it's actually one area unless you've done it yourself before trying to get your head around okay if I do a turn here and here's an up and a down is actually it's not that simple so I tried to imitate from the photos as much as I could but it's like if I look at this photo from this angle uh, I, that seems to show this corner and maybe a bit of that corner and I was guessing and hedging and it would have been nice to have that set out because next time I do a roller coaster it'll be a lot easier because I've done this one but it was difficult plotting it and it just felt like this is one of the hardest features of the park and to leave that one as a do whatever you want we're not really going to spell it out for you just felt a little like you were abandoned a bit <laughs> at the end also they had this interesting redstone circuit set up here that we found really difficult to make work properly and in the end we thought let's just simplify it and do something that works rather than imitate what they've got in the book it it it, it was just seemed felt more complicated than was required and also the skill level of the rest of the book all of a sudden they just throw you a picture of a redstone circuit and vaguely describe it and then well they really just describe the function of it and then leave it to you to make it work and we fiddled with it a long time we had the track turning the wrong way every didn't matter how we place it how we use the track would turn the wrong way and it so we just said let's simplify it do it our own way and uh, that ended up working <clears throat> so would i recommend this book absolutely it was a lot of fun to put together it really liked the build and how it's turned out but set your expectations it's not going to give you every step by step it's lacking some features that you would add in later and and definitely the edge I felt like it needed a couple of extra items just to spice it up and it'd be good to incorporate the or incorporate them more officially into the build there's a bit of dead space here that could be used I felt like the roller coaster could have done with something it's just like wood on grass it just sort of feels unfinished I'm not sure what you might do whether it's like put a statue or something in the middle or just I, I would probably want to change the the grass just looks bad it wouldn't it would seem off putting stone or something in there like you fall down and crack yourself open but I guess you're not supposed to fall off roller coaster but anyway that looks a little unfinished to me but I love how this turned out the ferris wheel definitely the water slides are great but required a bit of tweaking so like i said set your expectations do not expect somebody who's not already really good at building to just take the book and run with it it does it frustrated us in quite a few points like i said definitely felt worth it in the end but it, it's not like complete in itself here you go it gives you everything you need okay i hope this uh has been informative and helpful and uh you'll probably see this build later and a few other things i want to do okay thanks for watching Thank you.